My name is Floyd R. Smith. I was born on January 1, 1930, Big Four, a coal mining town in Pennsylvania. Well, being a kid in that coal mining town was, back in them days, was very tough, really. We didn't have none of the things that people had today as far as families. Lived in an old wooden house. You had kerosene lamps for light. If you wanted any water in your house, you had to carry it in with buckets. Well, anything you actually had in the house, you had to provide for yourself because there was no good things like we have today, like electric in home and baths and so forth. Nothing was ever like that. In fact, when I had to take a bath, when I was a young kid, I don't remember it too much, but my mother told me that she had to take me and put the old galvanized tub up, fill it up with soapy water and set me down in it. Take my clothes off and set me down in, bath me in that tub, then pull me up out of the tub and dry me off the best she could with the towel and, and things like that. It was, it was really a rough life, but children back in that day still, we still had a good time, we was happy because we didn't know of anything else. That's the way you were born and raised and that's what you had. And I had good parents that took care of uh, took care of me, my brother and my sister, so they have. So uh, it wasn't as bad as maybe as some people might think so in their minds, you know. But it was it was a good life. Well, like my father worked in the coal mines. That was a big thing back in the '30s. So it was coal mines all over the place, and uh, it was very very hard work. You had to get up practically in the middle of the night and go into the mine, then you get home early afternoon. And I uh, probably told you one time, I remember my dad coming home from work and he'd be so black, his face and hand, or anything, all you see the white of his eyeballs and his teeth when he talked. That's how dirty they got in them coal mines. And like I say, it was all hard work. I mean, I'm not sure people of our generation today could even think how hard it was, and I'm not even sure they could handle it. But that's the way things progressed over the years, so it didn't. The uh, way the Lord's plan was for our lives, so that's the way it happened. Years ago, they had, uh, like, there was no electric in the home for laundering and so forth, but they started out. I remember my mother had uh, an old ringer you'd scrap onto a side of a tub and that's how you rinse the clothes out and you worked it by hand, no motor on it up. And that's how you got the water out of them things. And you washed them in a tub by just soaking them up and down the clothes and like with a washboard. I don't know if you've ever seen a washboard, what they use for washing them, but that uh, they take them clothes and work on them washboard and just keep scrubbing up and down the rough ridges on it and try to get the dirt out and wrench it and then that's just the way it was but it, it was tough but my mother took care, good care of me and my brothers and sisters and we were raised and here we are today in this so-called modern world we have all the conveniences you can think of actually fight. <laughs> Some of the coal mining towns were, I say they were rough. And also the kids living in these towns were rough. And a lot of time it, it sounds crude maybe or what happened, but the kids in the town, we spent a lot of time fighting with each other too. And of course, naturally, the bigger kid would get the upper hand and they could uh, take over the smaller kids. But, but still, there was a lot of game you played. I can't, high go seek, that was one game I remember. Uh, not a game we might have played when I was a kid was, uh, you have a ball and put two or three people on one side of the house, two or three people on the other side of the house. Then you'd throw the ball up over the roof and then had to catch it. And, and uh, <laughs> it, it's a, games like that, or they, they would seem 
goofy and crude probably when you hear about them, but at that time, it was very nice, <laughs> convenient, you know. So, but again, you didn't have no conveniency in, uh, in the home. You had, uh, if you had a radio, if you were lucky enough to get a radio in your house, you know, they were battery powered and you had to get a certain battery so you could play that radio. But I remember when I was a lot smaller, I, we didn't even had no radio. Probably my dad couldn't afford it, and all he could do was just keep food on the table and and uh, pay it a little. I can't remember what he might have paid in renting him. But a lot of them towns we lived in, some of them towns we lived in, coal mining towns, they were kind of kept up by the coal mining company. that had their companies there. and. Uh, so the rent wasn't really nothing drastic, you know. You just got enough money to pay what they wanted, then you just got enough money and wages, my dad did, that he, we could survive. And I kind of look back on it today, I might say, I think living like that gave me some character for life, so it did. It gave you a better understanding about living, you know, what you had to do to survive and so forth. This land was made for you and me. When I was smaller, my dad, uh, I can't remember dad having a car. I think we did walk where a lot of places we go or maybe somebody you know that did have a car. You could ride with them, go somewhere, but automobiles were a premium back in them days. If people would see the cars we had back in them days, they couldn't believe probably people rode in them or, or how the hell together well you did ride in them, but whatever. But uh, but that's where you rode up and that's all you know, so it was okay, you know. Familiar places. The teacher would have eight different grades in that one. First grade up through eight, usually. And the teacher, he or she, or what the case would be, would teach everybody. So much time per class, you know. Get in a certain place in the room, you know, and the teacher spend that much time with that particular subject in grade. Just had to go through that all day long like that. Now, people don't really understand that today, how that would probably work, but it worked. I think we got some pretty good people out of the grades like that, so we did. In the year that I was in the eighth grade, uh, I was the only one in the eighth grade that year. No other eighth grader around, I was it. And my teacher, Mont Hawkenberry, he was a very good teacher. And he had me well prepared for get ready to go to high school. In them time, you had to take an entrance exam before you went into high school. And I can't remember this day exactly what kind of mark I got in that test, but it was a good one for that time. Because uh, one night, Mont Hawkenberry came, walked down to my home where we lived in Coal Town, Pennsylvania, and uh, knocked on the door, and he congratulated me for the good grade that I got in that exam. I can't remember what it was anymore. That was a long time ago. <laughs> but, but he was very proud of me, his only student he had in the eighth grade, and I got a good grade for him, so. In that Sunday morning inferno, the Pacific fleet appeared to be completely immobilized by the sneak attack. That happened in 1941. I was 11 years old at that time, and it was on a Sunday when that happened. And, of course, all us young boys in that A bracket was together in the town. We got together there, and we all wanted to go and get a gun, go and fight the Japanese. <laughs> and, of course, we were just young kids. We didn't know no better what was involved with a real war, you know. But that was a real tragedy in history, as far as I'm concerned, uh, starting in World War II in 1941. But it also was the beginning of the lifting up of United States of America. In Hawaii, Things really started to boom then. There was jobs, they put factories up, they had to build war supplies, they had to build things for war, and a lot of people got jobs that never had a job before. So it was an unseen thing, you know, maybe you don't think of it that way, but a lot of people had a job and they could 